Hi, I'm Amanda Tapping. I'm Damian Kinberg. You are watching the episode we like to call Sleepers. No, it's not. It's not at all boring. It's a very exciting episode. This was dun, 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 dun. Oh, I'll, okay, I'll pretend to be Martin Wood. This was shot just around the corner from our studio, and we had our amazing uh, VisFX team led by Darren Marcoux and Chris B and all these wonderful people. Um, create this amazing crash site, and we found one of the most tragic props we ever used, which is a nice new 3 Series BMW, which was already wrecked, and we put it in the forest. It is amazing what they did. It is. It is. It looks great. That was a bad... That's Martin Luther. That, like that. You, didn't, you didn't sound like Martin. You had the... the you had the right words. When visiting Epcot like Center... <laughs> <laughs> you mind if I take off my clothes? Yes, here <laughs> go. Damien's undressing. It's, a, it's awkward. Oh, it's awkward. It's so hot in here, isn't it? Well, because you have so much hair... You no, like I don't. Have a I shaved it all. No, I've been manscaping. A freaky. Have I'm you man- been manscaping? I I, <laughs> just so, so you guys know, that. strange stat, factuary. factuary. I own one, two, three different types of manscaping shaver units. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and I'd say, oh, is that because one broke and you had to replace it? No, they're all operational. Wow. They just they, they cut at different sizes and lengths. Beard. Nose. <laughs> um, Lord knows you need that. And then you know, neck down. Wow! Wow! I just died. Ah, 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 too much information. How do you like your eggs? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you believe that factuary, send me money. Oh, send us money for therapy. <laughs> oh, wait, we're back. Lisa Wilson uh, of Lee and Lisa Wilson of Anthem once gave me a, a little change jar. Like a box, uh, you put coins in it, and, it, and it's got this picture, a 1950s, you know, picture of a little kid with like you know ringlets and a blue dress, and it, this kind of oh, I, I and it says, "I'm saving up from some therapy." Yeah, and, I, I've uh, seen that. I I got Alan one that said something different, and I like I said, "Oh, thanks, Lisa." And then I kind of thought about it and was like, "Why? Why would she give you one like that? Why would she? Does she think she needed? Yeah, you know, a she thinks a I'm broke and b I'm crazy. Broken crazy. Broken crazy. <laughs> Now That's right, a television a series. <laughs> Broken Crazy, the, the series. Yeah. It'll be like my Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> Here comes Damien, Broken Crazy. What, what is that? Uh, what is that sound? <laughs> Amanda literally just made the giant toilet paper in the sky. <laughs> like, take toilet paper and triple the size, then move it down. Like, oh, paper towel. Paper you need paper towel? I need paper towel. <laughs> oh, my God. What does that mean? Do you have anything to add, J Mac? No. Jay Mac is turned Jay, purple. Jay Mac is embarrassed to be seen amongst us. You know what? Oh, can no, you just can no, you wait, wait, wait? wait. Okay, I'm just gonna say something. This is really hard. What this actress had to do here? Lie, in the, lie against a stick. Be dead. Mm-hmm. It is not easy to get. You've good done that dead. before. You, yes. You can get dead. Um, I do. We, just a second. I'm just gonna leave this here. Um, Jay Mac, why don't you say hi? Hi. Say I am. <laughs> I am. J Mac. J Mac. Oh man, the rapper's like Timberland or Will I Am. J Mac. <laughs> Who came up with the name J Mac? <laughs> oh, you owe me money. I do not owe you money. I made up that name. This is a good money. story. Here's why we called J. So Jacqueline McRae became J Mac because in season one you had this outgoing message on your cell phone that literally, if you had been drinking like I drink constantly, so I'm always somewhat hungover. It's like a permanent morning state for me, and so. Uh, I got sick of this, uh, calling Jacqueline's cell phone and hearing, Hello, you've reached Jacqueline on my cell phone. I can't take your call right now. Leave me a message. It's like this sort of like, the, the sun will come out tomorrow. tomorrow. And we're like, okay. I f- remember I kind of came to you and I was very serious. And I was like, yes. change, stop, just say, hi, this is J-Mac. Leave me a message. Say hello. Here's Robin Dunn's. Outgo- do it like that. And you did it. I wrote you the script and then you did it. And that's your outgoing message. And from then, thenceforth, you were J-Mac. The and then what happened? The and then you got a hot boyfriend. Got, you got a hot boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. And then, oh no, before the hot boyfriend, we got you switched from PC to Mac. Yeah. Yes. So that helped. It's sort of yeah. like an Eliza Doolittle thing. It's a little bit of an Eliza yeah. Doolittle thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. You're taking her under our wing and... Rain in Spain <laughs> falls well, mainly in the rain. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Yeah. Okay. We should, should we talk about the show? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, Robin. Look at Robin in the sunlight. Yeah. Dappling his thrice face lifted skin. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, contract violation. Oh, oh dear. Big contract violation. Not supposed to talk about Oh, uh, here's a little uh, shout out to our fans because we love Comic Con so much. Ah, yes. And you play this so well. For one. Uh, oh. 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 This is, uh, yes, this is a shout out to our fans. Mm-hmm. It's, it's beautiful. The attitude Magnus Estro's Comic Con is, is wonderful. 
she would. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. We yeah, love because yeah. Comic Con is where we got our start. I mean, Absolutely. It's, it's time for Comic Con is the gauge for us. Yeah. How well is Sanctuary doing? Let's go to Comic Con <laughs> and find out. Complete visual effect. This is a great look at that. Those are yeah, not this real is cars. Entirely green screen. I'd love to go shopping in that non-existent store. Mm. Um, full of men's clothes, I think. Uh, yeah, this is a full-on green screen set. Yeah. Uh, and. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, again about the ultra cool, amazing, super talented Andrew Lockington because ah. his music here is so righteous and cool. People want to put it on the radio. This is an episode that is directed by Steve Adelson, who sadly couldn't be here today because mm -hmm. he's camera operating on another television series. Whatever. Yes. Um, so this is a young, cool, hip episode. Uh, well, Steve is young, cool. He has a like, red streaks, his hair and double yeah. earrings, and, and he dressed. Uh, younger and cooler than he normally does. He, he dressed trust eyeliner. Trust fund vampire. He did. He yeah. he dressed he he dressed as a trust fund vampire. He um he put eyeliner on and he, he, lots of product in his hair and wore black and looked incredibly cool and then cast these incredibly cool hip young actors. And mm -hmm. Chad played by a guy named Chad. Yes, which was perfect. That yeah. was why we cast him. Really. Besides the fact that he's cute. Yeah, I thought. You know, when I re first read James's wonderful script, that all these kids should be kind of like Jewish summer camp refugees, <laughs> far more neurotic and afraid of the world. But that wasn't cool. No, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, just not at all. What and we it's had like, in mind. yeah, not the show. <laughs> but uh, cool here. This is great music, and it's a nice bit of. You know, let's talk about this first of all. James Thorpe, the wonderfully urbane and witty James oh Thorpe. Oh my gosh! The you meet this guy, and you never know that he is capable of <laughs> the kind of wit and... And uh, twistedness. And twistedness that comes out of him. Yeah. He looks so uh, white bread. He looks like your accountant. He does. He look, he, he's exactly the kind yeah. of guy you trust with your... He's, he's like, you know, and he's very dry. He's like, he's like kind of like, the, his, his humor is this vast desert. He is warped. He only eats raw food. Yeah, he only eats raw. And so he always, he's in perfect health. Um, <clears throat> and he's incredibly well-spoken. And... Um, and dry and, and dry acerbic and as acerbic and lovely. He's just super intelligent. And he and he and then he writes these scripts where uh, we had never seen him actually kind of flex his comedy muscle um, because he'd done Pavor and he this was the one he we've been holding in advance. He had this great Tesla story, and he wrote it, and we just went, oh my god, this is just we had to pull him back. Yeah, he went, you know. It's sort of one of those horrible double standards uh, between showrunners, and I had this on previous jobs of shows you may or may not have heard of, um, <laughs> where um, I love this horrible music. Andrew locking instead of this cue right here. He goes, I knew I'd found the right cue when it was such an annoying, awful piece of music, I knew I had to use it yeah. through the introduction of the clinic. Anyway, back to James, um, where this showrunner says, only I can be stupidly funny. You must be more to the point and, right, right. and pull back. And I thought, no, I can't do that. I've had that done to me. I don't want to have the, the reins pulled in. We pulled back a little bit on some jokes, but really we let James really yeah, take James it out to the, to the edge. And he did a great job. Well, well and of course, then you have um, our cast. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. You're yeah. right, yeah? yeah. <laughs> That's what Robin said. Said it was short, but you know, when not so bad. Yeah. And James's wit works perfectly with our dear and beautiful friend, Jonathan. Who just took everything and made it wonderful. And made it. <laughs> Yeah. That's Hard a visu yes. that visual effect. Entire visual effect. I want to that swim there. Little corner. I'd shop at that store, then go but swimming there. Then go there. swimming there. Yeah. Buy a bikini at that store. My avatar looks there. better than me. It's <laughs> My avatar is the way hairiest better avatar. Than me. <laughs> <laughs> Monsters uh, Inc. <laughs> the hardest thing about acting with Jonathan is that um, he's trying not to laugh. Hmm. But he's astounding. Oh. And I just love the chemistry with you guys because he's. <laughs> It's great. It's a great moment because we've established the Tesla relationship, yeah. and we've established him as a good guy in End of Nights Part One and Two. Yeah. And then we get to kind of return to form at, a, at this sort of other level where you get to cut through a lot of the blah 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 and go <coughs> enough. You know, yeah. I'm waiting. You know, just tell me what crazy, irresponsible, ludicrous thing you've done, done now. Done now. Yeah. What are you up to now? And and also James gets to really. I think of all the writers in the show, James is the most Tesla-like. Yes, so yes, he, he is. He is, because he literally l does that kind of, this moments of like, you know, this is way above your head, but try to play along. Mm -hmm. You know, these wonderfully acerbic lines. And uh, it's delightful. He's, he's a wonderful guy to go out for dinner with or just sit and have lunch with. And he, um, 
he he's one of these wonderful guys who has a silent laugh. Yeah. <laughs> you get him rolling, and just the sound drops away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's good. He, I was so proud of this of this story. It it turned out so well. And Steve uh, Allison did a great job. So we had this sort of interesting combination of this very reserved, uh, lovely, uh, witty writer, and this rock and roll kind of director, and mm -hmm. it came together so well. And um, I, I love doing these fun episodes. I mean, I think that, you know, th the show needs them. We've had a lot of dark. And someone said to me, oh, you know, we've had this many downbeat endings in season two. And I was like, yeah, but... Yeah, but... So what? <laughs> get uh, all this effect until we get to... Uh, yeah. Here. <coughs> I'd like to point out that over on the right-hand side are some uh, high bar stools that now sit in my that kitchen. That now sit in your kitchen. Yeah, they're comfortable. I wanted the uh, antique barber chair. That the guy was I wanted the patio furniture. So this is, a, uh, we should tell who these people are. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Adrian mm -hmm. Carter. Um, th Megan plays Laura. And Megan actually got married. We, she w we had her scheduled for the Friday of this week that we were shooting. And she was getting married. So we mm -hmm. had to rejig the schedule so she could go to the island and get married whatever. Yeah. And we, we didn't get to mention the other guys. Ryan. Well, Ryan, lovely, plays uh, Darren. And Raphael <coughs> plays Jeff. We was, I thought we, we, were, we set the tone by calling the bad guy Chad. Yeah, I think that, that pretty much <laughs> sets it up. I think Trust fun baby on this fourth Ivy League tour. Chad. Let's call him Chad. Either Chad. that or Biff. I wanted to call him Dangling Chad, but <laughs> nobody got the joke. <laughs> I get the joke. Costumes went, what do we do with that? Anyway, there's your joke. What? I was watching the <laughs> show on television the other day, and for real, this guy's name, for real, was Biff Carrington. That's like a Pixar name. I, it's, I know. For real. I don't want to tell you what I was watching. But Look, I'm the head <laughs> duck in this farm, and my name's Biff Carrington. <laughs> I'm an animal voiced by Patrick Warburton. <laughs> That's it. No, my Patrick Warburton, I can do a better one than that. What did yeah. I see, which was Patrick? Oh, Emperor's New Groove. Oh. You want me to go get that? <laughs> Looks like they're going to go over a waterfall. He's on everything super smooth. I just couldn't let him die. I love that man. He's uh, we got to get him on the show. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's Only if so, you can talk like that. That's so. The, that's like, like a that. show thing. We got to get the guy to show. He doesn't. He hasn't heard of you and wouldn't work with you. <laughs> He's no idea. Yeah, that's that's, that's why we haven't <clears throat> got him on the show. Got him on the show. Yeah. We we're, we're, we're like we're not as important to him as his toilet paper representative. <laughs> so there's uh, uh, Ryan Kennedy, with the lovely Darren. It's good. He's good. He's he good. Ryan does a great job. I know because I had to play read for his part during the read through. Ah, that's right. And it was sort of like, well, we could do this the you know young stupid Saul Rubinek way, uh, <laughs> which is how I read when I'm taking someone's place in the read through. <laughs> Why are you? You're, you've got your turn like over your face now. <laughs> just, I worked with Saul Rubinek. I know, but I I'm like calling him. myself a young stupid version of oh, him. Oh, a young stupid. I'm version not insulting of him. him. Oh, good, good. Okay. Crazy okay. ass actor that he is. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I love Saul. We've he's a big star now. He's a big star. Warehouse on 13. Warehouse 1.3. 1. 1. 1. 1.3. Uh, yeah, Saul's, come on, uh, Unforgiven? Yeah. Great scene. Heroes. Yes. I, yes, he was in Heroes. He was amazing <laughs> in Heroes. I remember that he was supposed to play, essentially, they wanted the, the character that was like Al Pacino in The Insider. Mm-hmm. But he made it like Saul Rubinick. <laughs> well, you know, Rob called him, we're talking about Stargate now, great. Yes. Uh, oh, he called Emmett Bregman, and I said, you can't call it Bregman, it makes me hungry. There was a Bregman's Bagels place, remember it's on oh, Young yeah, and St. Clair? Oh, yeah, Young and St. Clair. Yeah, Bregman's. Huge bagel joint. If you're in Toronto, go to Young and St. Clair and go to Bregman's. I don't think it's there anymore. It's not? No, I think it's gone. Across the street from the uh, Uptown? Highland. Highland. No, Why do I lose no the Hollywood. Hollywood. The Hollywood. The Uptown was downtown. Down, yeah. That was the irony. That's where, <laughs> irony lost on everyone. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> including me. <laughs> uh, here we are in this lovely uh, sun dappled. <laughs> Nobody hijacks Nikola Tesla. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> so great. <laughs> He's amazing. I love Jonathan Young. I want to kiss him on the back. <laughs> uh, it's so cool. I think you have. Th I have in my dreams. I have a pillow named Jonathan Young that I kiss every night. Oh, oh. that's too much. Strike that from the record. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. Move on. 
So this was a cool, this was just a little, this was in one of our sound stages, this set. And we all walked in and went, oh man, wish we had a place that looked like this. Yeah. It was I a very cool apartment. I wish I had funky a, artwork. I wish I had a pad. Now you know that this guy's not going to make it because he doesn't have cool enough clothes. Well, he's wearing the stripy t-shirt of death. Yeah. We Which might as well have put him in a red shirt. Yeah. This is our version of, of the red shirt. shirt. Stripy, horizontally striped polo. Yeah, with, um, with a kind of, you know. Yeah. Don't make Dorky me go on the, uh, the polo. Like he doesn't have the cool, uh, yeah. he has no product in his hair and therefore he's going to die. Exactly. Bring the young man in the polo shirt on the away team. We're going to beam down to the planet. Does he have a last name? No. He's Ensign. Mm -hmm. What about Ensign? Steve Archer mm -hmm. is his name. Oh, right. He's, he did a good death. Also, I like how Darren refers to him as dead Steve. That was really funny. Oh, he's dead Steve. That's right. He's not Steve Archer. He is... No, that he's can't Steve. be right. No, but he's referred to as dead Steve yeah. in this scene. So there's which a lot of scenes of our... Steve, of our he's Gene Cuomo by Sato. Yeah. Wow, we suck. So you may wonder why there's not a lot of blood. Well, <clears throat> she drank... Laura. You know, yes, but Laura drank it all. Ah, uh, That was ew. the theory, yeah. It's all inside her little, you know, tight jeans. <laughs> Moan on the lips, forever on the hips. <laughs> exactly. Very caloric. <laughs> you know, it's like having a giant you know, high calorie blood boost protein shake yeah. you know, of blood. Low fat content. Yeah, really. It metabolizes quickly. Yeah. Not good for the Atkins diet. Yeah. yeah. Might give you the trots. <laughs> <laughs> my dad with my dad with the Trotskys. Anyway. <laughs> Better than the Stalins. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, where did we go? Oh, what happened? We digress. You went from <laughs> the shaving your body is Jack to bottle. It's out of control. Wow. It's spinning towards the edge of the highway. Martin's not here. We don't have Dad here. Yeah. To keep us in check. As my my brother does an imitation. He goes, "Want to see me imitate Dad?" And I go, "Yeah." He goes, "Shush, boys." <laughs> that's it. It's his imitation of my father. Shush, boys. Don't make me stop this car. Exactly. It's in a car. That's exactly the thing. I got my extra glasses. I can't see. Shush. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so safe. <laughs> But, Dad, they haven't invented the shoulder belt yet. <laughs> anyway, I'm drinking coffee. Can you tell? <laughs> Damien drunk coffee again. Where's my little metal canister of alcohol to put in this? Oh, it's, you, you, people will believe that that I is know. true. I sound drunk, so why not just... You look drunk. I look drunk, I sound drunk. Why not just be drunk? Why not be drunk, exactly. Yeah. It's too cliche. It's too cliche. It's too cliche. Too cliche. Well, also, okay, I Aus am drunk. Australian and Scottish... They yeah. just assume you're hammered. All the time. All the time. Hey, drunk guy. <laughs> you are genetically predisposed to some major issues. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, when, when what's his name, uh, Russell Crowe threw that phone at that guy's head in the hotel lobby? Yeah. I understood. <laughs> well, of course he threw a phone at someone's head. He, you know, he was in the middle of a phone call and someone interrupted him. Or tried to take his beer away, all kind of, let me manage you... Russell, you don't need that. <laughs> Bang! Don't touch my S H I. You know what? <laughs> T. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Where are we? Okay, so here we are in the Mexico oh. parking lot, which is in Burnaby. Um, which is yes. Uh, this is our our studio is across the street here. Um, now we do this amazing fight sequence. Oh yeah, yeah, Magnus King vampire. Kick her but. right in the gold belt. Yeah, well. There you are. Now, you go. this right is cool. Buckle. It was a fun gag. I remember James coming to me and going, I'm this. ready. Uh, yeah. He goes, oh, yeah. God, I hate okay, that Okay, so part. here's how it we did that. freaks me out every time. Here's how we did it. It was a green screen <laughs> shot where we drove the car, and then we also, then we put him, and he reacted. But the wonderful thing about this is James came to me, and he said in this very tight voice, he's like, I'm writing this fight scene. I don't like to write fight scenes, and I don't know how to end this, and how do we do it? And I was like, well... Why don't we just have Tesla <laughs> wipe the frame with Tesla getting what? The only way you're going to take Tesla down is if you bash Knock him with a car. He's a yeah. vampire, right? Oh. Oh, we have to go back. We're first, still talking yeah, about Yeah, we're this. still talking. The first time I saw that finished yeah. fight sequence yeah. with the car. That, that, ah, the only way you up. can take Tesla out is if you smash him with a car. Yeah. And I, I, it freaked me. Freaks, it still and, freaks me. And James loved it. He's like, oh, it's great. He'll be saying something witty and then, boom, just escalate him out of there. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Anyway, he's lovely. Okay, I want to congratulate our wonderful uh, uh, costume designer, Christina McCory, with coolest belt buckles in an episode of television. See, look Ever. at those dudes. I know, they are. Oh, Total dude, dudes. look at those belt buckles, dudes. Yeah. Because if you're going to be like a early 20s vampire, yeah. you, uh, 
you have a belt buckle. Yeah, you better have cool belt buckles. Otherwise, it just doesn't sell. Dude, where's your belt buckle? Hair product, cool shirts, and belt buckles. Yeah. Um, this this show was bigger cast, like more cast heavy than than we usually have. We usually don't have this many actors in an episode. Mm -hmm. So Steve had his work cut out for him. The more actors you have, the more coverage you have to do. The more you, because he's shooting this very cleverly because he's trying to get everyone in the frame. And, and um, but it's hard, man. It's not easy to 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 give everyone their due and to give uh, put enough footage in the can, as it were so that you can have lots of choices when you edit. Mm -hmm. And I love Nic uh, Nicola in this scene. Jonathan. Well, he makes sense. This is the thing with this episode, is that Tesla's argument actually kind of makes sense. All I did is I, when, I, when trying to sort of actually, you know, have a job at this point, James was doing such a good job, he said, I said, how does this And I go, look, you know what, puts a funny cut. I said, try to work this in. Because I, I, th this is what I would do to sort of sound officious. I'd say, try to work this in. Can you just have a shot where literally we're sh looking up at a, at a skyscraper and Nikola Tesla comes screaming into frame and hits a car? And they went, oh, that's fun. And I said, so have this long discussion of the King of the Vampires and then just just don't end the scene. Just cut to, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and James loved it. And he worked. He, he worked everything. Around. So I kept making these requests, like have him destroyed by a <laughs> by a SUV, have him fall off a building, and <laughs> oh, this is this is the stuff. Very that funny, but it's also like <laughs> oh, God. Ah! oh, that's gonna hurt your bum. This is lovely, and this is the great thing about the actors on the show, is that when you tell them what just happened, they play it totally. Yeah, that would be just three down, too. Um, great green screen shot. Amazing. Yeah. This was the episode of uh, Wrecked Cars. It was. We kind of blew the budget on Len, that. Len Shan found this, who's our transport captain. He found all these cool cars that had been in uh, accidents and just mm -hmm. kept bringing them to set. And go, great. Put an actor in there. Put an actor on that. Yeah. So, uh, there's the paycheck chair again. Yep. We love that chair. I think we need it in every episode. I hate that chair. It's the most uncomfortable chair in the world. <coughs> Whoever wants to buy an it awkward to film around and big base on it, and it's just it's. Yeah. Why why do we keep using it? We don't have another one. We just put her in a regular. <laughs> you have a better idea of a place to sit down. I'd like to hear. It. <laughs> <laughs> we have couches, ergonomic chairs, we have a bean bag. So. <laughs> we have we have tons. Oh, of options. it's too much information. We have this uncomfortable blue chair that's ninety-two years old. <laughs> weighs 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds. <laughs> Makes but it difficult to move. When you press this button, mm. nine minutes later, it's reclined five degrees. <laughs> mm. After making... Is it moving? Mm. Yeah, you can tell it's moving by the sound it It's makes. like moves at the speed of the Clear the studio. We're yeah. going to recline the chair. You know how you can watch the sun slowly move? <laughs> it's like that. It moves in time. It, it's a geosynchronous orbit of a chair. <laughs> oh, that's not going to get me anything into good attention from the ladies, is it? Oh, see, but that's a chair. <laughs> see, the chair that Tesla's in right now, this antique barbershop chair? Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> so if you, if you met me in a bar and I said, you know, I have a chair on uh, a show I work on uh, it has a geosynchronous orbit of the sun. Uh, you know, bras would fly you Take off. one look at those nose hairs and run. <laughs> good <laughs> lord! There's no god, there's no god, there's no god. <laughs> Oh, don't hug me. Aww. Don't take it back. <laughs> I just trimmed them. That's the sad part. I know. Really? No, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You're fine. You're no, because I was looking at them and they're driving. You know how you almost get in an accident because you're driving and you go, I sense something's wrong with my nose. So you tilt your head up into the right and you look up your nose and then you go, <laughs> no. oh my God, there's a car in front of me. That's called me driving. Oh. And you, you just got your motorcycle ball. license. Yeah. <laughs> see, I see? can't do that. In the helmet, I want to do, I go, oh, these mirrors, I can't see up my nose. Plus I have sunglasses on and a face shield. Ugh, this is intolerable. But you know what? I love riding motorcycles. No phone. No yeah, distraction. thank God. Except I'm you, shiny thing. Shiny thing, squirrel. Squirrel. Yeah. He's just the worst person in the world to have a motorcycle license. Why? Because you're so distracted. Except when I'm riding. You have the shortest attention span of anyone I ever know. No, ever. <laughs> I can't speak English today. What? You have uh, anyone. What are you doing? I ever, no. What do you mean? What is this? Is this called <laughs> sleepers? What? episode that we What's the microphone? <laughs> oh, I did Amanda on you. You totally have. Amanda does this to me once in a while, and she waits. She waits months. And then she literally turns to me and do something like, you are such a jerk. I can't believe you did that. That I, And she turns on the, you know, the freaking Meryl Streep gene. And I go, I, but I, 
Oh, you got me. You And then you just start giggling like a hyena. <laughs> you burned me with your acting power. Anyway. Well, you just kind of did that to me. Except that uh, yeah. I've been ill. I've had the flu. <laughs> and I, uh, I'm sleep deprived. And, uh, I'm clutching my chest. I'm clutching I've my been chest Ill. as we speak. I've been ill, and my I judgment is off. <laughs> yeah, I've impaired judgment. Okay, I just want to defend my motorcycling ADD technique, because I think it's actually... It, this might help you. The motorcycle might help you... It's why I did to it. ...to form longer periods of concentration. It's actually... It's, I want to talk about my perfect score on my motorcycle skills test, and my incredibly good score on my final hour-long road test with uh, CBC. I displayed incredible focus. And recovery uh, when I nearly got killed. What? Yeah, you when you I tell us about the nearly got killed. I did part. when I just did my test. I I had to do a to turn into the, the right hand lane of, of Boundary Road near the studio, and uh, <clears throat> immediately came into a line of parked cars. So I was like, well, I have to get into the middle lane. And as I did, a minivan was racing along, and so I either had to do an emergency stop in front of these parked cars, or change lanes quickly and get out of the way. And I thought, you know what, I can't. My ego said, I can't do a stupid controlled stop. That's going to look bad. Now, the, the testers are behind me in their own van watching me. So I shoulder checked, signaled, and zoomed out in, into the into the middle lane, uh, avoiding the mini. <clears throat> and I thought, well, that's it. I failed the test because danger yourself, cause another car to slow down quickly, you know, right away. It's all a problem. Anyway, the test goes on for another 45 minutes. So I think, well, I guess I have a chance here because they're still testing me. This is not torture on government money. So, well, I thought it might be. <laughs> so then we finally get to the end of this test, and the only other thing that happened is uh, on a residential street, I hit a giant maple leaf that was on the wet street. <laughs> and the a back, child. A giant <laughs> child. A giant child. He's fine. My bike is a write-up. No, I hit this maple leaf. It's like this big, like a right, huge, huge size of a giant dinner platter, and it, it, it was wet, and it took the back of my bike out of it. So the, the bike twitched out from under me, and I had to kind of correct it as I did this really low speed turn. And we I have to continue the story because they're yeah, going to yeah. wonder. Okay, so we end up back at the testing center and they go, <clears throat> and then you sit there, you take your helmet off and you wait. And they say, and then the, the dudes in the, the testing van sit and talk for five minutes and you can't read their lips. And uh, they, they get out and this guy comes to me and he has absolutely no, he's a completely dry, monotone guy. He's a droid. He's a droid. He's a testing droid, and he says, you passed. And the look on my face, I wish I had a picture of it, it was like this, huh? <laughs> like, Grr? And uh, he said, yeah. He said, you nearly killed yourself. Do you know where? And I said, yeah, when I turned into Boundary Road. He goes, yeah, but you see, the truth is, one of the things we look for is bike control, and you recovered from that as well as I've ever seen. Wow. Like, he just rode that hog out of there. And then he said, you also, f he goes, you also almost filled your pants when you hit that leaf, didn't you? <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what he said to me. Like, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, I don't believe mockery is part of your uh, mandate as a government employee. You failed the test. Yeah, you almost pooped yourself, didn't you, son? <laughs> anyway, and then he showed me my test, and I, did, I had barely any demerits. Everything else was perfect. Wow. And so uh, you can just take back your nasty comment about me being... Uh, I'm still not going to take it back. Is there more coffee? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm not taking it back. I'm not taking it back. No. All right, so there's a long story about me. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> you threw me under my own motorcycle. I did not. Anyway, you forced me not. to tell that story. It's a bit. Okay. Okay. We Your turn. You tell a story about yourself. Uh, what do you like? Are you a like fish? <laughs> I like wine? long walks on the beach. I like red wine. By the way, I found this out recently uh, on the, the behind the scenes when Robin's singing the Pina Colada song. Yeah. I thought he made up the lyrics, if you're not into yoga... yoga. And you have half, half a brain. brain. No. I thought that was those, the, are, the, those are the real lyrics. Yeah, because yeah. I got a That's cheesy set. That's why we set. laughed. Yeah. yeah. If you were making love at midnight. midnight. Yeah. yeah. We have to sing on every bloody commentary, don't we? Oh, it's we our do. trademark. It's our trademark. Yeah. Ah, see, this took a while because we had a few breakable bottles here. And uh, they never break the way you want them to. This one. Broke. So the devamper. Perfectly. I can tell you about the, 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 the devamper. So tell we, us, please. Because, so, because it might be relevant. It's actually something about the show. Oh, my God. Relevant. We're in the writer's room, and we're talking about the last two acts of the show, which often can be the most challenging. And we're sitting there, and, and Alan and, and Sarah and James are like, uh, how do we do this? What, how do, how, what's, what's the gambit? And, and James is sitting there, going to be cool if he had a weapon or some kind of fail-safe, and what would it be? And literally in the writer's room, remember this thing, is, is literally looks like a, a leftover prop from Superman. It's like this glass 
cylinder, mm-hmm. about the, a little bit smaller than the actual D damper. And I, I'm playing with it, sitting, sitting lying on a table or something, playing with it. And I suddenly hold it up and I go, I, you guys think I'm just being lazy, but what if it was this? What if it's a, a, a cool looking glass tube that's powered by Tesla and it, he can devamp them and that's his fail safe? And they're like, and Alan McCullough looks at me like, uh, you're just saying that because you've been playing with that thing for an hour and you're <laughs> out of ideas. And I was like, yes, but. But it works. <laughs> and it stayed and we actually took that down to props and said, Nick, what do you think? And he built a cool devamper and literally. And it actually it. works really well. Yeah. And so it's a. I used to pick it up and do my Marlin brand new impersonation. Well, I was a Krypton. Mumble, mumble. Mumble, mumble. Mumble, mumble. My hair's fabulous. I'm wearing white and I'm all better. So uh, that's where the devamper came from. And then the joke of the devamper was all Jane. I call it the devamper. (laughs) Such a bad name. Hey, is it true that Marlon Brando had a generator on his property that just just in case the power went out to keep his, his ice cream frozen. <laughs> you that can ask that question bad? with a straight face. <laughs> I will answer it. Because maybe I do know that. I've never heard that one. Yeah. I, I thought you were about to say, is it true he has a generator on his property to keep his laundry running so his moo-moos are always clean? No, no, no. <laughs> it, I heard that he had a generator on his property that if the power went out, it would still power his freezers that kept all his ice cream. Hogging those particularly, apparently. I didn't order a milkshake. I ordered ice cream. I can't do a Marlon Brando. You kind of. No, Peter Deloise can, can do it. Peter Deloise can do it. And Robin. Robin. Robin will sit there. He'll scratch his... I, I need a, a wheelbarrow full of terms, so... <laughs> you can, I can't do it. He can do it's it. It's not bad. No, no bad. see, I'm getting the come see, come saw. But fine. you're closer than... Yeah. yeah. All, if you get all three Deloise brothers together and they start doing oh. Brando, you get three Brandos. They came to visit the set. Wh- it wasn't the set. Was it Was it Haunted? Um, all of them. And all three Deloise brothers on and their set. And their mom, Carol. And Carol. Yeah. Which was them. awesome. But yeah, it was, it was a yuck fest. It was very funny. Oh my God, you it never ended. You can't have the three ended. of them in the room together. Yeah. yeah. You, you can't stand too close to them because the hand gestures could knock out an eye. Exactly. They're lovely. Yeah. Um, and I, I look at Peter's mother. And David. I don't know how she does it. Yeah, and she's so calm. She's calm and tiny, demure woman, beautiful. She has the h- resting heart rate of a triathlete. Yeah. Because she's raised three Deloise brothers. Yeah. Um, what else can we say here? Uh, oh, here's a cool stunt coming up. This yeah. was fun. This was fun. Um, we. I, I don't know how you guys came up with it, but it just. I love the. Uh, are you kidding? I invented it. Line. Martin. Martin. Oh. Martin. Oh. He oh. can't be here today because he has the flu. Would you like my c- updated m- impersonation of Martin? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. We both had a good laugh. My brother actually knew how to do the, the pre-puke imitation, which is yeah. he could actually do the imitation. He'd take a, a big garbage can and do the, you know how your salivary glands activate? And you sit there over the garbage can and you go, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> and he can do it. And you're just like, you watch him and you're like beginning to feel kind of awkward. He's like, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. I'm like, Nick, just please don't. <laughs> can you imagine? I've just come out the other side I know, I'm sorry. You can't go there. And then he'll stop in the middle and go, see, this is my salivary glands activating. You're going to fill your mouth. Oh, so and help prepare, prepare yourself. And I'm like, oh. Nick, you're killing dust. Stop. You're an awful human being. Yeah. You felt too much about this. <laughs> he has, too. <laughs> your brother does that. Yeah, he overthinks it. This was a bit weird. Can I be honest about something? It was kind of a dumb plan. Like, oh, let's just walk in and then, oh, let ourselves get captured. Yes, oh. knowing there's vampires in there. Knowing that there's, you know, Teenage Mutant vampires in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Seemed a bit dumb. Not the finest hour of our Not, team. yeah. Um, well. Yeah. I mean, it was necessary to get to the next bit, but but Good. I just. Guilty. We could have. This is, this is, there was a few times where we just kind of couldn't quite figure out the coolest move. And it literally, it literally is almost the difference between having an extra day of hashing it out, or even an mm. extra afternoon of sitting in a room and finding them. But you, you're, you're all completely jammed together. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <spinning>. <laughs> oh, long strain. Oh. We're still doing the pre-puke. <laughs> the pre-puke. Oh, we're back. Yeah, it's better. I don't want to talk about the failings of the structure of the story. Can we talk about what it's like to almost puke? It's so much more interesting. 
Okay, we did not create the coolest plan for Magnus and her team. It's true. And you know what? I'm glossing over it because uh, I have to pee. <laughs> yeah, no, we could have come up with a better plan, a better way in, scanning it. You know, here, too, if, is even it? Even a line of dialogue. Something. But here, too, is an interesting problem for Steve. If he were here, I'm sure he would have talked about the fact that this was a very tiny little space to film in. Yeah. So he did an admirable job in a three walls of a, a much smaller space than I think he anticipated. Yeah. Although it makes sense because it's supposed to be a closet, so it couldn't be too big. But, uh, oh, Jonathan. What you needed here, actually, if, you know, this is just, again, about fatigue, is that if you had them say, we've scanned it, we've done a thermographic scan, looks like they're all congregated here, we should be able to go in this way, and you realize that Tesla has done something to kind of literally pull you in to your right. job. Because he knew we were coming, he knew right? You were coming. He obviously and he didn't want you to get killed, so he set you up to fail. Right. Maybe you guys could just burp while you talk. That was like kind of a Richard Dean Anderson moment. That really wasn't was Richard. You know, Dean. Carter. Uh. <laughs> 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 Rick, are you gonna? Pee? Oh. oh. Anyway, the, if you if you kids at home want to rewatch this episode and then literally pick your moment and come up with the best ADR line as you know over the shot of the building maybe before they go. Right. Thermographic scans indicate they're all congregated in one area. If we kept, the element of surprise should be ours. <laughs> and then you could add another ADR line. That's beautiful. That was my Magnus. Then another one where you go... Um, the uh, element of surprise should be off. Yeah. Uh -huh. Magnus yeah. doing William Shatner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Thermographic scans. <laughs> Indicate. Oh. So, the, so, and then we could do another one <clears throat> when we're on the back of Magnus <laughs> in the closet. She goes, you deliberately sent those thermographic scans <laughs> to our <laughs> scanners. <laughs> so, <laughs> tricking us into failing. Well, I need to save your lives, and whatever. Just if you could all do that to make the episode better. Wow. We're you failures. Never, we you, suck. You. I oh, am. suddenly we're not producing no, the show together no. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I executive produced 12 episodes this year. <laughs> 12 and a half. 12 Most and of half. this episode, 12, but not all of it. 12 episodes and three acts. <laughs> <laughs> I bear no responsibility for acts three and four of Sleepers. <laughs> Thanks, man. That was really uh, big. Hey, I didn't. Do you need me for this conversation? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I made the snort. Awesome. Dave made the snort. It happens once That's a year. It happens once a year. Oh, Very exciting. Lovely. And a good fight. And a good fight. One kid got really punched out here, too. Is <laughs> that funny to you? Yes. Because everybody was texting me from set. Oh. oh. Got Which one was it? Uh, was it Chad? Chad got clocked? No. By I thought it was Raphael. I thought it was Chad that got clocked by uh, Oh, maybe. I don't know. I just got a bunch of texts all at the same time. Well, he did punch him. Which is why I know. Yeah. No. Hmm. Sure? I did not actually clock anyone in this episode, which is weird. Because mm -hmm. I tend to. Uh, but uh, Ryan um, came out unscathed by me. And I could have. Take him out. Take him out. I chose <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you know, again, this I climax could have been yeah, better. I just think there was another way. I, 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 I think it's good that we don't sit there going, look, we had this all figured out, okay? Yeah, we I are know, amazing. No, it's good that we're fallible. I don't mind that we're fallible. It's yeah. just, uh, and in fact, I, I think it's way better mm -hmm. that we're not perfect. Um, always. Uh, otherwise, your heroes are boring. Yeah. And in the heat of the moment, you know, what decisions do you make, right? It's easy to sit there and watch it and go, oh, should I done this, should I have done that? But I'd like to say having that, I said was that I trying think. to avoid the super clever ending, but boy, did he do a good job. <laughs> 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 we don't want to intimidate our viewers with something that's so amazingly clever that he couldn't see it coming. Kind of, but uh, the idea Dad. is to just get them through the hostage moment. No, this thing coming up is, is a bit scary because, you know, we had to clear the studio, clear everything away from the set. Uh, all this stuff is protected. Of course, we're not there when this actual explosion happens, but we're, you know, producers are behind the monitors and you can see the flames coming up through the roof. And uh, it was very scary. We did it like three times. Yeah. It was like once wasn't enough. Let's do it again. Oh, hey, that worked. Let's do it. And I'm just like, okay, here goes the studio. This was a really neat moment. This is a great moment. Which we Jonathan. debated doing. We debated yeah, whether or not I, yeah, yeah. can Tesla still be Tesla without his vampire powers. And uh, I thought, what a great moment to give the actor. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, just Jonathan ran with it. Mm-hmm. And everyone's a little set. Kind of, right? It's yeah, it's wonderful. Because you know you love to hate him and you hate to love him, and it's just, just that's the kind of J.R. Ewing character yeah. you want to be. And if you'd like to, you know, use your stone tablets to look up who J.R. Ewing was. <laughs> <laughs> Who? You'll, get, you'll get a message back by Carrier Pigeon explaining. <laughs> I've got to stop with the Carrier Pigeon joke, shouldn't I? <laughs> I think I it, you're dating yourself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Barney. We'll be late for the uh, the Brontosaurus <laughs> Burger meeting. <laughs> Let's get in the car where our feet drive it. <laughs> <laughs> and we tip over when, when the meal comes. <laughs> <laughs> love that. That's great. I love the music. Da, 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 da. Simpsons, Homer Simpson, <laughs> he's the greatest guy in his story. <laughs> Another music violation, right? Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. 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 yeah, Not an NBC show. Did this? I, I I liked the way that this was written. Was it that it was rather subtle? Um, and Will kind of calls her on it. Yeah. Whenever Will can kind of see past the veil of what Magnus is feeling, that's nice. Yeah. And it's often you, and when it's he only did, ever private too. Yeah. It, yeah. And. It, those are the kind of moments that define these two mm-hmm. and their relationship. Nice centrifuge. Yeah. Thank you. Top plate. Great <laughs> Don't know how it works. <laughs> Don't touch that button! <laughs> they just go flying out. Yeah. Oh, where's the cover? <laughs> it's in the cafeteria covering the cupcakes. Oh. Now, we should talk about Andrew Lockington. Uh, he's beautiful. He wrote a piece for the end of the show that is um, he, yeah. cares you for missing and through the next and he warned he warned us he warned us he said this will make you cry first of all he 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 talked he, he there's a tragedy that befell Jonathan um, that we won't talk about here but it warranted um, an emotional comment and Andrew made it for us Mm-hmm. With this beautiful piece of music you're listening to right now, and um, and he wrote it for Jonathan. He wrote it. He wrote it. Uh, he yeah. wrote it not just for Tesla and for this incredible moment where this character is now um, dealing with the fact that he's, as as Tesla put it, ordinary, yeah. which I love. That and he used that and word. Andrew writes music that makes you cry. But yeah, he wrote this beautiful piece, yeah. and this is such a lovely scene. This is just like he's still cocky. He's still arrogant. He's still. I'm bad. He's still Tesla. He's just. Like and when you work with someone like Jonathan, who you just love, yeah. you want to service his work yeah. to the very nth degree. And uh, we love this man, and uh, we would do anything for him, and we want him on our show constantly. Yeah. Because he makes the show wonderful. And here's this. See, this yeah. is so beautiful because it's so subtle. It's like, what? Uh oh. What does Tesla have now? And, how <laughs> and, and now, the beauty of it is, how is this going to manifest? We're back and forth on what this should be. And uh, yeah, have fun, and what fun. his power should be. But it should be something fun. <laughs> I love the look on his face. Oh, eyebrow. And I love your reaction, which yeah. is just kind of so great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening to us again. Be morons. And Thank I speak you. for Amanda when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much.